Well, okay. hey, everybody. Uh, thank, thank you, Ben. Uh, I think I'm going to get started because there's uh, a bunch of us on here, and uh, we'll get to some introductions here in a little bit. Um, it's very cool to see everybody. Love it. Um, you guys are all fantastic, and uh, we love having you on here. Uh, we love what we do. Um, you know, uh, Ben. You do a hell of a job, Keith. You and Ben. You do a hell of a job. Oh, thank you, buddy. Thank you. It's and all. Artie, I've been absent. It's all Keith. What, Ben? I've I've been absent, man. It's all you. I haven't been around. <laughs> we won't tell. Let's not tell anybody because that way, if there's a problem, I can blame you. <laughs> I stop recording and start recording now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Listen, I appreciate everybody, all of you guys. Uh, we'll talk here in a little bit too, but I, I want to give Michelle a, a chance to get going. So, but before we do that, Michelle, you're yeah. going to have to hang on for a few minutes. Sure. Yeah, no because, problem. Uh, first of all, I want everybody to understand that uh, we are recording this and uh, we send this out to all of the, all the people from Stroke Awareness Oregon so that they can watch this. And so uh, we, you know, we try to watch, you know, how many bad words we say and stuff, but if it happens, it happens. It's a stroke survivor meeting. We all have <laughs> those times, uh, maybe me more than, than some. And, uh, <laughs> and of course, oh, where'd you, there's Bev, Bev, your picture's not on, but Beverly is a, a pastor. And so I, I try to watch myself with Bev on the call because she she might get me later. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I want to also ask you guys that as we go through this, because we're getting more and more folks, a lot of you I haven't met yet. I look forward to it, by the way. Um, I, I would ask that you raise your hand either this way or on the form of the uh, the. Um, PowerPoint or the, what is it? Zoom meeting, sorry. And uh, then I can call on you each individually because otherwise we get a whole mess of stuff going on and we're really trying not to do that. We wanna make sure everybody gets a chance. And also we wanna make sure that it's clear and, um, and all that. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, Arnie uh, talked to me a little earlier today, just for a second. I'm not sure what's uh, what's on his mind, but he wanted to take take the uh, the helm here for a little bit, and I want to give him that chance. You guys, uh, Arnie is a great guy. Uh, he's been with us uh, a lot uh, throughout the gosh couple years, I suppose we've been doing this, and uh, and uh, he's a fantastic guy. Arnie went through quite a stroke, um, and uh, he's doing really great. He's a guy with a hat on because he's getting ready to go hunting. So Arnie, take it away for a few minutes, buddy. Okay. For, for I know there's several new people on, but my name is Arnie Hubelman. I live in St. Louis and um, I, I, had a, a right, I had a right occluded uh, stroke back in March of 2020. Oh, by the way, Keith has only said he's holding me to a couple minutes. So I'm going to talk fast. <laughs> a few minutes, a um, few minutes. I know, I know uh, a lot of you, I asked, when I joined a group, probably in the summer of 2020, um, I made a comment because I was I was trying to learn about strokes and it, what people have experienced and their stroke about recovery and things like that. So um, one of the things I asked our group when I first joined, I had these sensations every once in a while in the back of my head and they would come around to the front. And then every, every um, well, this is what I'm looking for. Every, every, um, I lost it. You're okay, Arnie. Take your okay. time, buddy. Um, your time. I mean, well, every effect I had, you know, such as fatigue, dizziness, um, you know, that, that, that well, that's what I'm trying to think of. Every, every factor or issue that I had from my stroke would completely go away. Like I never had a stroke. And then periodically, since, since uh, tw the summer of 2020, I would have, I would get the same, uh, same, same instances where I'd be sitting or in, a, in the house and then all of a sudden 
everything I, I had from a stroke would completely go away. And I don't know if anybody has experienced the same thing, but that's what I wanted to ask, you know, tell everybody is periodically I would get these feel and uh, not feelings, but like I'd be sitting here talking to my wife and all of a sudden every, everything I had and all the impacts I had from the stroke would completely go away. And I just wanted to uh, ask, you know, just it's more of an informative thing. You know, that's some, some of the things I, I, I experienced from my stroke and I just wanted to share that. But well, what, what, what are the ones? Arnie, let's do this, buddy, because of what you're what you're talking about. I want to come back to that after okay. Michelle presents. Let's okay. come back to that. And that will open up a whole realm of stuff that we can all chat about, because I think that's really key. It's really important. And I don't want to pass that on. But I, okay. I definitely no want problem. Michelle to give a chance to, to talk about uh, her, um, you know, what she's going to present to us and stuff. No and problem. So had I known, I should have, I should have saved that for the last. And my apologies. No but, problem. No but problem. That's awesome. And Arnie, uh, that's a great, great thing. But we'll talk about it here in a little bit. So let me, uh, let me move on. Um, we're excited because uh, Michelle is from Bend, Oregon. She's one of one of us, actually. <laughs> if I can say that. Yeah. I, I might get hurt if I say that, but anyway, <laughs> she's a Bendite. Yeah. And uh, Michelle is, uh, I should say, Dr. Jackson. No, Michelle's, uh, Michelle's perfect. <laughs> she's a neuropathic doctor. She specializes in hormonal imbalances. Uh, today, she's going to talk about neuropathic medicine and, and uh, what that means for us pre and post stroke. And so, uh, Michelle, frankly, I'm just going to hand it over and, and let you yeah. get going. Oh, that perfect. Thank, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, and I can, um, if I have some slides, I used my brain power and learned how to do the slides on here. So can I just share? So I'll, I can hit share my screen and I'll, I'll just talk while I got those up. Will that work? Yeah. And Ben yeah, that's Ben's good. Gonna, yeah, Ben's going to help you through that. So, okay. And I'll oh, get rid of that. I need to hit this hit slideshow, but this is covering that. Oh, we can see it. Yeah, I want to get rid of all this stuff. Um, the, the yeah, you know what's covering it? The um. The thing that says you are screen sharing, it's covering the um, start slideshow. <laughs> hey, Chuck, Michelle, go to, go to slideshow, and then you want to go to, you want to get into presentation mode. You're not yeah. Sure. Yeah, it, you should be able to click and drag that part that says you're sharing your screen, like click. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, thank part. you. That's yeah. going to work perfect. Okay, here we go. Okay. Now you guys don't have to see that other stuff. Is that correct? Are you only seeing the um, the slide? Yes. The naturopathic medicine therapy for post strokes. Okay. Well, perfect. Well, again, thank you. Thank you for letting me uh, talk with you guys today. And um, I would like to address things, um, not necessarily how, because you guys know about this, you know, the, the type of strokes, immediate care, more, I'm not going to talk about more traditional medicine for, um, and again, mainly I'm talking about after someone's having a stroke, but more about um, naturopathic ways that we might look at someone <clears throat> after they've had a stroke. Um, I end up doing a lot of testing, which I'm going to talk about. So it's just more of a holistic approach at looking um, at someone's health after they've had had a stroke. Um, so just some background to to myself. Um, I have practiced. I practiced primary care medicine in Bend for about 20 years, and then just last year, about a year ago, January of 20. 22, I decided to try to specialize more in the things that I really love to treat, which include adrenal and thyroid, male and female hormone balancing, but also neurotransmitter issues. And neurotransmitters are your, are your brain chemicals. And I'll talk about this more, but there's a way you can test things like 
serotonin and dopamine, a lot of the different brain chemicals that definitely can get out of balance um, after someone has, has a stroke. Um, like I will, for example, do that neurotransmitter testing for fatigue, um, insomnia, mood disorders, memory issues, et cetera. So I thought that might be some interesting information for you guys, you guys all to know, because it's a, definitely a little bit outside of maybe what um, the traditional doctors that you're seeing might be doing. Um, so, and I wanted to talk just a little bit about naturopathic medicine. I'm not sure if, if people are familiar with naturopathic medicine or not. Um, in each, each state licenses naturopaths differently. Uh, in Oregon, we're full primary care physicians, meaning we can prescribe all medications that medical MDs can, medical doctors can. Um, but I feel like one of the big differences is, is looking a little bit more, naturopaths tend to look a little bit more at the cause of symptoms, treating the whole person. So it's pretty inclusive. Um, besides prescribing medications if needed, we're also the experts on supplements and dietary changes and lifestyle. So it's a pretty inclusive um, form of medicine. So I just quickly listed there the, the um, what is that? Six principles of naturopathic medicine, mm -hmm. um, which you guys can read, but it's first do no harm. So we're trying to always help the person. Healing power of nature also includes the, the feeling of, or the belief that the body, the human body has the capability to heal itself. Um, treat the cause, which is a big one for me. I was all set to go to traditional medical school and then started to research naturopathic medicine and trying to treat the cause, not the symptom, really stood out for me at something as something I was interested in. Treat the whole person. As you guys know, it's, it's very difficult to, se uh, to separate out mental, your, you know, your mental, emotional, physical, spiritual aspects of your health. They're all they're all integrated. Um, when we can, prevention is the best cure. And then one of my other favorites, doctor as teacher, I, I really enjoy um, giving talks and doing lectures. And another big difference I feel like between naturopathic medicine and, and traditional doctors is, um, you know, we spend, we spend a lot of time, like my, my average patient visit, the new patient visits are an hour and follow-ups are 30 to 45 minutes. It's really helping the patient understand what's going on with them and um, helping them understand what, uh, what's best or helping them decide what route they want to do. Um, I usually say like, I'm not going to go home with you. So these are the things that the choices that you can make and 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 um, let them decide from there. So that's just a quick background on um, naturopathic medicine. Um, this I, I can I don't know if I can give you guys my slides. I I should have put this one at the end. I get a lot of questions, and I'm not going to go over this about um, people want to know like where's a good place to get certain supplements or what is good quality. And so this is just three um, websites that I often send people to if they want to research what they're taking a little bit more. Um, and, and for example, like the supplement, uh, the last one there, the supplementreview.com, um, I hope I spelled information wrong. Um, you can, you know, you can look up a particular supplement, like say you wanted to research um, 5-HTP and it'll have the top brands as well as, because they do independent testing on, hey, you know, this brand actually has the 500 milligrams of the active ingredient that they, they say are in there. Because there's a lot of crappy supplements out there. And I really like people to, you know, not waste, waste your money there. Um, so that, that's just some information because I get lots of questions about supplements. Okay, let's go on to more um, kind of what I see oftentimes after someone's had a stroke. And this, I went through my 
um, pa my patient demographic right now. And I know there's other things, but these were some of the common complaints that, that people were coming to me about. Um, falling, infections, um, fatigue, mm -hmm. cognitive impairment, including mood disorders, insomnia, which I'll talk about uh, um, a bit too, kind of how I'll look at, at treating that. But um, they're just the things that I've been seeing people come into me to, to see quite a bit after having a stroke. Um, okay. So I wanted to go back to one of those principles that I was referring to um, in naturopathic medicine about treating the cause. So if you think about it, um, you know, many times if you had an underlying health condition that contributed to you having a stroke, just having a stroke doesn't necessarily mean that that cause has gone away. So it's really still important to look at these issues that could still be going on before and after having a stroke. Um, some of these common ones, these things I know you guys are familiar, familiar with, like atherosclerosis, high blood pressure. I'm gonna I'm going to talk a lot about um, high cholesterol which is the hyperlipidemia and inflammation. I, I feel like inflammation is a big um, underlying issue of a lot of health concerns. Um, the excess blood clotting factors I'll talk about and, and kind of with, um, with, with testing. Um, and then, well, heart, I won't talk about heart valve defects necessarily. Um, hold on, I just wanna see oh, my next one. Oh, um, and again, diabetes, aging, sleep apnea are just, again, things associated with um, strokes. But um, I really want to talk quite a bit or start talking about inflammation and uh, high cholesterol. So there's, a, there's people out there who have high cholesterol, but the high cholesterol, the cholesterol never, um, gets in, doesn't really clog up their liver or doesn't cause heart disease. But for most of us, it, do, it does. The high cholesterol tends to have um, um, detrimental effects, mostly when it's coupled with inflammation. When there's inflammation in the body, it often causes the arteries, the inside of the artery walls to become sticky. And then if you think about it as the blood's flowing through the artery walls and it has cholesterol in there, if those walls are sticky, the cholesterol then will stick to those artery walls and it can do two things. It can cause those artery walls to narrow, you know, it's kind of like a, a clog in, in a pipe. Or if the, if the cholesterol sits there for a while, it can become calcified and, um, that also, those calcifications in the arteries at times can dislodge and travel to the heart or, or the brain. So both, both of those issues can be a factor um, in strokes. So just because you have had a stroke doesn't mean you, you know, you, that the high cholesterol goes away. So it's really important to still, to still look at that. Um, I'm going to, I'll come back to this. So I want to go back to, oh, sorry, to go to the testing because I wanted to talk about, uh-oh, um, my testing part. Because a lot of what I was just talking about you are, is easily tested in the blood. Um, <coughs> I apologize. Where my testing stuff is. Well, I'm just going to have to talk about it um, <laughs> and then go from there. Um, I'll just go on this one. Okay. So, so one of the, one of the th ways that I will evaluate someone once they come in post stroke is to do testing, as I mentioned. And I mean testing a lot of blood testing. Um, and that includes certain proteins that are in the blood 
as well as checking that the cholesterol, checking some inflammation markers. So, um, and this is what I was looking for. I don't see it. Um, one of the proteins that always needs to be checked is homocysteine. And homocysteine is a protein that the body forms. And it's a known predictor of heart disease and stroke. And I really hope that this information, some of it's familiar to you folks that you're like, yeah, my doctor has checked my homocysteine levels because um, the, I think the statistic is that homocysteine levels are high in 50% of patients who've had strokes. And, and one of the reasons could be is homocysteine, this protein, causes inflammation of the arteries, as I was talking about, and it can cause platelets to stick and cause blood clots. And there's ways, if you find out that you've got this elevated homocysteine level, which I often look for in other, in other patients, just as the age, there's natural things that you can do to lower the homocysteine levels, such as B12, folic acid, B6, zinc. So by knowing some of this information, um, you know, it can just overall improve your health. Um, another protein that I will check post someone's had a stroke before, I mean, at a certain age, usually it kind of depends on the person's history, if there is a history of heart disease or stroke, but around 50 is when I'm usually starting looking at a lot of these markers, um, if not before. Um, fibrinogen, that's another protein that caught in the blood that causes clots when it's too too high. It's very involved in the, um, the blood clotting process. So when it's too high, it can cause abnormal blood clots. When it's too low, it will cause the blood to be thin. Um, it can have hemorrhaging. I see more usually high, higher fibrinogen in people. Um, stress increases fibrinogen. So once again, if you if that fibrinogen fibrinogen level is elevated, there's supplements that you can do to reduce these. Um, omega fatty acids, green tea extract. So there, I often have people come come to me and they're on this whole list of supplements because they've heard it's good, you know, for post stroke or memory. By testing some of these markers, you can, you won't waste your money as much. You know, you can narrow down what you need to take versus throwing, you know, everything at it. Um, um, another, I'm just going to go over, um, yeah, one other, one other test that should, should be done is called C-reactive protein. It's an earlier, an early inflammation, early indicator of inflammation in the body. And um, once it, it also makes the cholesterol real sticky. So again, it's easier to form um, clots on, on the arterial walls. Um, so that's an important, and, and CRP is inflammation throughout the whole body. So that's a common one that I test, you know, just in general. And again, I'm really hoping this ne this other test that I'm going to mention, you guys are familiar with because I feel like everybody should have it. Um, it's called an EBT or it's also called a cardiac um, calcium CT score. And it's a very simple CT scan that, that you can, that doctors can order that they can image the arteries in the carotids, which are in your neck. They look at the arteries of your heart and they look to see if you have placking forming uh, um, already from high cholesterol. So it, it's an important thing. It, I feel like it's very important for a number of reasons in that it gives us some perspective of how aggressive we need to get with this higher cholesterol. I've had people with really high cholesterol levels, no placking, no calcifications. And it just helps us know we don't, not that we don't wanna watch it, but we don't have to be as aggressive in the treatment for lowering the, the cholesterol. Um, okay, let's see if I can get to the right, right one here. Um, yeah, I think I'm getting close. So I'm not going to talk specifically. The DM is diabetes. I mean, that's a whole other, other um, 
other talk, although I definitely see that related um, very often. My, my patients that have had strokes, there can be some blood sugar issues. Um, so that's one, one thing we definitely will look at with diet and, and certainly some weight loss since mm. extra weight puts a, um, a strain on the circulatory system. Um, so I do want to, I will talk a little bit more about adrenals and thyroid and, and hormone imbalance and balances too. I think I've got some slides with them specifically. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me just talk a little bit about thyroid disorders in, um, not, not, not everyone who has had a stroke has, necessarily has a thyroid disorder. Um, but it is something I feel like should be screened for. Your thyroid is this little gland in your neck that um, produces hormones and, and certainly can lower with, with age. And the, the issue with the thyroid is there's really big ranges of normal on traditional lab tests. So oftentimes I'll have people come in and they'll be like, hey, I'm having trouble losing weight. I'm really tired. Um, these are all low thyroid symptoms. Um, they might have some hair loss, low mood, but they're like, I, I think it could be related to my thyroid. My traditional doctor says it looks fine. And I'll, and we'll rerun the labs or I'll look at the labs and I'm like, yeah, you're in the normal range, but not in an optimal range. So by treating the thyroid, whether it's with drug medications or supplements, many times we can move their function into a more optimal range. I still want someone to be within the normal lab ranges, but there's oftentimes big, there's again, big lab reference ranges that you can get more ideal um, ranges. Um, so I almost wish that there was like average lab ranges and then and ideal ranges uh, listed on the, on the labs, but there's not. Um, so I treat a lot with that, um, and the, and there's a lot of other thyroid testing that's that's certainly underutilized, which I'm not going to go too much into that. Um, adrenal disorders. So definitely, um, that's something I will look at after um, someone's had a stroke. So your adrenals are these little glands above your kidneys. There's two of them usually, mm -hmm. and um, it's very involved. Your adrenals are involved with the stress response. They produce cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine. They produce some um, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. And I, I find that um, stress and the effects of stress definitely, definitely can be part of the cause of someone having a stroke. But also afterwards, the stress on their body from going through that and, and then certainly the the, what's the word I'm looking for? Not side effects, but the issues afterwards is, are very stressful. So by screening the, for adrenal disorders, uh, once again, we can get, we hopefully can get people um, functioning more optimal. Like adrenal disorders, I tend to see, again, a lot of fatigue. If cortisol is rising at night when it's supposed to be low, that may cause some insomnia. Um, and more commonly than not, I see the adrenal disorders being more fatigued due to we just live in a society where there's a lot of a lot of stress, a lot of input. We're in kind of this fight or flight mode probably more often than than we should. Um, so that's another thing that I will look at quite a bit that I that I bet you guys may be able to relate to. Um, this is a, this, the bioidentical hormones. Again, I could talk probably all day about that one, but um, I guess in general, I'll, I'll tell people if you think about it, and I, when I talk about your bioidentical hormones, I'm talking about testosterone and DHEA for men and women, estrogen, progesterone, lower levels of testosterone. And I, I just feel like with that hormones that there's, there's more they probably do in our body than we totally understand. And the reason I say that is most, most of the time, by the time we're in our early fifties, our hormones are really starting to drop if they haven't plummeted out. And think about how many 
diseases and health concerns really start to come up um, in our 50s or later. And I just feel like there's probably a, a component with a drop in hormones more than, than we're probably looking at enough. Um, so I do a lot of work with that. I, that I don't hesitate to put men or women on hormone replacement if they need it. And it's a certain natural kind that I do because there's a lot of receptors in our brains for hormones. Um, they, they really are, um, one thing they do are, is, is brain, they are brain chemicals. Um, then um, one more testing that way I, I'll be with it is those neurotransmitters, which I marked, but I talked about before. So there's this really simple urine test where you can run your different brain chemicals, um, including serotonin. And serotonin is the brain chemical that um, most of the antidepressants, anti-anxiety drugs work on. Some of the sleep medications, serotonin and GABA, which um, they, they affect. And you know those medications don't actually help people make more of these brain chemicals, they just help people absorb and utilize what they have. So sometimes by doing this brain chemical testing, you can find out if someone's low in serotonin and actually give them how we make brain chemicals are through amino acids. You can give them the specific amino acid needed to help build up whatever brain chemical may be low. And Again, again, just because I'll tend to do the neurotransmitting test, neurotransmitter testing for people with fatigue, insomnia, me, you know, memory issues, focus, concentration, um, it's just going to be a really value, a valuable, a valuable tool. Um, ha headaches, cognitive functions uh, too. So, so then I wanted to just briefly talk about a few supplements. Cause like I said, people come to me and they're like on so many supplements or they'll say, Hey, I heard this is great for, you know, for my memory, et cetera. I guess I'll go back to what I mentioned before. Some of this testing is so helpful to know like it, like if you don't have high, high homocysteine, maybe you don't need to be on B, high doses of B12 or folic acid, by testing, you can, again, kind of help um, individualize the treatment plan, plans. But some supplements that I see that are studied over and over again for cognitive function that I think are worth mentioning, and the, the parentheses after those are just uh, um, average um, or approximate amounts that, that people often are put on. Um, but these may be supplements that you guys are on. So I thought I'd mention them. And again, these are the ones that I see are studied consistently and showing to have benefit. Um, Huprazine A, that's, it increases a brain chemical called acetylcholine. And um, acetylcholine helps the neurons to, to fire. Um, so it just helps the, the neurons, the brain cells talk to one another. One of my very favorites is the second one there, um, phosphatidylserine. It's a plant fatty acid and, and our brain is fatty tissue. Um, and the phosphatidylserine is very nutritive to the neurons. Um, it also lowers cortisol. So again, back to that stress response, it's something that can help dampen the cortisol response. It's been shown to help with memory. Um, so that is one of my favorites that I put many, many people on. Omega-3 fatty acids, I bet a lot of you are using those, things like fish oils, flax, borage oil. Um, there's so many things that fish oil are helpful with. They lower cholesterol, they can lower inflammation, you know, just kind of feed, you know, feeds the brain in general. <clears throat> Acetyl L-carnitine is another. Uh, it, it's it's actually made in the brain, but you and it is an amino acid like um, substance. Um, but you can also supplement with it, and it's very <coughs> helpful for memory. Um, curcumin, which comes from from turmeric, 
any kind of inflammation that I see, I, that's a common one that I'll have people do because it's so anti-inflammatory. And, and, and again, I, that's a hot one. A lot of people are, are familiar with that and maybe are already taking it. Um, I just have two more. Ginkgo biloba, um, one of my favorite ones, and it's been studied for a really long time, um, just for general cognitive and func function. I use it also a lot for migraines and headaches. It, it helps a lot with that. Um, it does have some inhibitory effects on um, platelets and blood clotting issues. So if that's something that someone has going on, if we test the fibrinogen, I might put them on ginkgo. And finally, lion's mane, um, which is a mushroom, that's been studied a lot for cognitive function. Alzheimer's, there's a lot of studies with it, with Alzheimer's, anxiety, even um, diabetes, blood pressure. So I just wanted to touch upon those again, because these are supplements that are studied, that really are studied a lot versus, hey, I just heard this is, this is good for me to take. Um, <clears throat> And then I'm not, I'm not really going to talk about this so that people often ask about what diets. Some of my favorite diets are the Mediterranean diet. There's anti-inflammatory diets. If someone has really high inflammatory markers, there's very specific food allergy or food sensitivity testing that can be done because people can react to foods that are, are good for them. Like, like, for example, I have a reaction to eggs that produces some inflammation. So normally eggs are a great for, source of protein, but for me, it's not good. It's raising my inflammatory markers. So if I can't, if we can't quite figure out the cause of the inflammation, it, it could be something that you're, you're eating in, in your diet that you can find out and eliminate or at least lower the consumption. Um, yeah, it, that, we don't have to go over those. Those are the some those uh, supplements that can thin the blood. Um, start that again. So, so that was kind of it. I mean, I I just wanted to give you guys an overview of again maybe another way to evaluate what's what's going on uh, pre or or pro, post having um, a stroke again. Um, if we can decrease some of these conditions or some of these precursors to prevent future um, problems with your health, that that's where I'm trying to go. go Michelle, down. yeah. So let me uh, let me uh, move in here and and just uh, let anybody ask any questions that they might have, yeah. which would help Please. a lot, I think, for their specific um, situation or whatever. <laughs> And uh, thank, thank you for, for sharing all that. That's really yeah. good information. Yeah. So um, let's see, can we get it back? Ben, can you get it back to the... Um, yeah, get, get rid of my slides. Hmm. Hey, Ben, could you tell Keith my hand's up? What was that? Aaron's hand's up. <laughs> okay, Aaron, you go, buddy. Hands up. <laughs> Michelle, thank you very much. There are two things. Just let me introduce myself. My name is Aaron Alva. I am the founder and CEO of Stir TV Media. I also run a, run a, I host a podcast called the Stroke of Genius Podcast, which I want you on. And talk to Keith, if that's okay, we can access. But two things you sure. said that I think are really important. So I'm going to begin it to my podcast. And the reason I want you on is the word inflammatory and the body heals itself. Those two key things you said, the body heals itself, has the ability to do that, and how detrimental inflammatory diets are. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I agree. Yeah. Could you drill down on that a little bit more. What is inflammatory? Sure. Well. Oh, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, um, you can get very, we can look very broad in that, in, in one, one way you can say, and it's true, you know, sugar and processed foods are pretty, are in general, are very inflammatory. Um, you know, the more processed the food, the more you have to 
break down, break it down. So having, I often in general tell people just try to eat, um, you know, whole foods as much as possible. Or let me give you an example. Like, you know, I'd rather have someone have an apple versus an apple pie. Like, you know, try to keep the the ingredients simple. Now, there's also other specific inflammatory diets. Like, there's a lot of people who can't break down this class of um, vegetables, the nightshade family, which include, it's really common, tomatoes, potatoes, eggplants, peppers, and, and there's a chemical in them that a lot of people can't break, da break down. It's called solanaceae that causes a lot of inflammation. Um, so again, you can get really restrictive and that's sometimes why the food allergy testing or food sensitivities testing is great to find out what you, a, an individual person is reacting to. That's really great. So what about your statement that the body has the ability to heal itself? Much it, much is coming on that. You want me to comment on that? Yeah, well, uh, and again, it's a principle of, of naturopathic medicine and it's really going around, going to like, so for example, if someone has, um, you know, a, a, a stomach ache or they're having a lot of stomach issues, um, if, you, if you are able to find out maybe what foods they're reacting to, give them maybe some supplements, some, some probiotics to rebalance out what they need, their body will then become a balance and you can go off of those, those supplements or off of that diet because you, you know, it has, it has healed it, itself. Um, so it's hey, just- Michelle? Yeah. Is there some place where, you know, we, anybody can go to say, to get a list of, of supplements and what benefit they are to the body? Yeah, I would say the the best place that you can do is that first um, website. It was um, Health Healthline, and I'll have to look back back at my lab or my things. Yet. No, it's, Michelle, health, it's Healthline. Michelle, real quick, yeah. can we can we get your slides, and mm -hmm. then that way I could share. If, if you want to share those with me, then I can yeah. share that with uh, the group as well. Please do, Keith. Okay. And it was, and it was Healthline. And if you, again, you can start, you could type in a supplement, like say you're curious about like, hey, I've heard lion's mane is good. It'll talk, that Healthline one will talk about the supplement. And it also has articles and conditions that it treats. So that might be a really good one for you to look at. Awesome. But yeah, I can share my slides. Absolutely. Are there some other questions for Michelle? Yep. Uh, so. Hi. Sorry. Hi. 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 Mainly, uh, mainly uh, oh. I have an issue that I, I couldn't get any help. So I figured that maybe ask you this question. Uh, after the show, I had this thing called brain fatigue. It's uh, really weird that uh, uh, one thing I noticed that is, uh, uh, I can be wake up and had say even seven hours sleep or so. And I can, uh, one of the things that I notice is if I stare, looking at say the morning news or the stock market and whatnot, and after uh, I could watch only like an hour and sometimes gets tired and then I can take a nap. And sometimes I try to watch a movie and watch a movie only for say mm -hmm. 20 minutes and my brain when it drain the energy it just kind of like gone it's not like the it's not like the kind of tire that uh commonly people say well i didn't have you know any sleep last night that kind of tire is different than the kind that i have and i don't know how many patients that you ran across that share this this kind of I don't know what you there's, call this. There's, there's symptoms. Yeah. Well, and, and I think it, actually what you're talking about is not that uncommon for, for me to hear about not just post-stroke, but this brain fog. Um, I hear it quite a bit for people for a number of reasons, sometimes hormone, when their hormones are low. Well, I'm wondering about with you and I'm guessing, and we would, if we would talk about it more, but you know, watching TV or et cetera, it's a, it's a lot of stimuli. And if you're 
that your your adrenal brain connection is having trouble handling all of that stimuli, yeah, it'll kind of shut down, you know, shut down. So looking at something like your adrenals or dopamine um, levels, it was off the top of my head that I would think about maybe to to consider with you. Uh, can I pause for a second? I can I can lay in the bed. And looking at the uh, laptop monitor, uh-huh. and I can look at that for a whole hour. And I don't get tired, not nowhere uh-huh. near it. So there's a normal kind of tire, not this kind of thing. All of a sudden, like you have a leak in the tank, you know what I mean? And uh, so I just wonder if there's any kind of vitamin that you were <laughs> talking about, a supplement, that kind of thing that may help that. You know, people said that uh, on, the, on the commercial, on the TV, some time uh-huh. ago, they said, Jellyfish might help your brain. Oh, I, yeah, that I, I heard that. It was like Prevagen or something like that. I remember that. But wait, let me ask you. Um, Michelle, Michelle. Yeah. Keep your train of thought real quick. I just yeah. have to say, I I have a commitment I couldn't get out of. And uh, so I have to run. Ben's going to finish up the meeting. Thank you so much. Thank You're you welcome. all of you guys it's, so much. Yeah. I appreciate all of you. And I never do this, but I have to today. So. Oh, yeah. good. No problem. Bye. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye, Keith. Bye, Keith. Bye, Keith. Um, I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to ask you, um, what and when do you th- end up feeling really tired after you're up for the day? Meaning, like you're up and awake? No, I think it's when I uh, when I uh, start, you know, like looking at text message, uh, oh. uh, and watching TV. Uh, I think something to mm-hmm. do with, you know, I did talk to my nerve doctor. He said, "Well, I don't know if that." Uh, that your stroll did some damage mm-hmm. to your eye processing, whatever that sector. Mm-hmm. So when you use your eye, but she hits a weird thing. If I look at the nature, trees, uh, go trim a tree, go mow the lawn, and look at you, uh, look at uh, 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 a meal, cooking food, I don't get tired much at all. It's a normal kind. But when yeah. I start, you know, like, looking at a text message. Sometimes I'm okay for a little while. Sometimes I just look at it and I would feel like, oh, look like you're draining my energy in the first one minute. So I'm going to stop. I'm not. So I, I'm fortunate yeah. that my son drives me around. So when he drives me around, I just cover my eye, you know, I have an eye thing and just that kind of like rejuvenate, so to speak. Yeah, kind of like yeah. a small nap. But yeah. any, any, kind of, any kind of natural path or anybody that have that kind of a tiredness that it's like, it's like energy with jaw in a quick way. Sure. Uh, that's something I can do or, or yeah. what I see. Yeah, you know? well, I have to, so I have two thoughts. Um, that one of the supplements that I had mentioned, and we'll get to this slide, that phosphatidylserine could be helpful for you. But I, I'm wondering about with your neurologist that he might be onto something in that there, there's therapists that do vision therapy. Like maybe it is something that with the way your eyes are tracking and, and then your brain's responding, that's really common. And there's, they're more occupational therapists, but there's vision therapists that can help evaluate that and then even give you exercises to look at that. Hey, Michelle. Yeah, you know, it's I, I like one more thing. One more thing. I had something similar to so, and I ended up going to a, a neuro ophthalmologist and he yeah. helped me with my eyes. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. I, I, they can be really helpful. Send me that. Uh, could you send me that in the email, sir? That who you see or what do you call that term? Because I'm not sure. the sure. No problem. So language. I don't know what that. Whatever you said, I like to have a uh, neuro ophthalmologist. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, what what is it? You know, he, he gave me several eye exercises to do. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm thinking, and and it's really common. Mm-hmm. It's common it with kids. It's common with people okay. who get migraines. Okay. It's it's it happens quite. Or it's something did it, that did it help him? The gentleman. Did it, that just, did it help you, Arnie? Yes, it did. Nice. Yeah. But, and, you know, and, I still I still get times where my eyes get very very tired, and yeah. just like so, if I just close my eyes for thirty seconds, two minutes, or whatever. And just relax, you know, it kind of goes away. Yeah. Mine's different. Mine's is not the eye that are tired, the brain that are tired. The brain, like like from a full charge, always down to like three percent. It's like 
<laughs> but yeah, you don't get the use it anymore. Yeah. I still think I still think the ophthalmologist or the vision therapist would be wor worth looking at. Or even blue light glasses. Um I will recommend that for, for people quite a bit. It's really in an inexpensive thing to to block the blue light from from the phones and the and the computers. That over that can really bother people people too. And and your regular um ophthalmologist and eye doctor can often like put a, a, a lens in or put the blue light blockers in with your regular glasses. But but yeah, but maybe something like that might be worth looking is at. Is that ophthalmologist the same thing as the eye doctor or something? I mean that he's, he's an eye okay. doctor that specializes in uh the the, the brain. Okay. Okay. Yeah, now that sounds like a, a good. Maybe I go check it out, see if uh, anything they can do. Maybe they can line up my eyeballs or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Anytime. So. Okay. Uh, I think Lori, Lori Rents, did you have something you want to ask? Uh, actually, it's Paul, but I'm on my oh. wife's computer. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, my situation is uh, my stroke was two years ago, right side brain bleed. Uh, and in the last eight to 10 months, uh, fatigue has increased a lot and left side uh, body tingling and tightness, mm -hmm. a lot of tightness in the muscles on the left side that I didn't have before. And so I went for, oh, 14 months doing pretty good. And then just recently, you know, yeah. the only thing I can figure in the meantime is it was a very gentle fall, but I was outside, lost my balance, leaned against a portable backstop, which went over and I fell on my knee and didn't even hurt. I just brushed it off, came in the house. That's the only marker I can think of that changed. Right, right. So, and was the fatigue <laughs> happening before the, the, the uh, muscle tightness? No. No, they, co they coincided. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, some some real general or, or things that I would su maybe suggest looking at um, and pretty easy to look at. Um, low B12, which you can test in your serum, you can test in blood, does cause a lot of nerve issues. Um, you can also run magnesium that m is very involved in muscle tightness. It, um, letting your muscles relax, I should say, is what magnesium yeah. does. I don't know another possibility, just, you know, you did okay for a while and now um, you just have hit a point where where your adrenals are, are they've used it all up and yeah. those need to be assessed and just kind of, uh, again, you just used a lot of those reserves yeah. up now. Um, yeah. yeah. So I'm on a magnesium supplement. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So Good. if that's yeah. something that would help, it's not working. <laughs> right. Yeah. So my my thoughts would be again maybe looking at some some B twelve, um, yeah. and again the the yeah just the adrenal component yeah. perhaps. Okay. By okay. the way, could you give me a uh, um, thing to some kind of supplement for my situation, or did you even mention? I anything? did. I mentioned phosphatidyl. Therine. Let me just spell that for you because that's a mouthful. Yep. Um, okay. It is P H O S P H Y. P H O S Y. Um, P H no P H O S P and then there, and then <sighs> P again. So it's P P H O S P Y H Y. Mm -hmm. And then S E R I N E. Oh, pronounce and that one time, please. <laughs> yeah, P H O S P H Y L S E R I N E. Okay. And a dose would be. I would say to do 200 milligrams twice a day would be a, a good starting dose that anybody could could do. That's supposed to be good for your brain? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Where do you buy this? 
Oh, you can get it. I don't know where you get your stuff. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it at a health food store, Whole Foods. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a Thank common you. one. Sure. Thank you. I got to go. Welcome. Nice talking to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Josh has his hand raised too. Um, but Josh, you're muted right now, man. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I uh, I had a stroke like Lori's husband. Um, and uh, on the right side is a bleed that affected my left side. Yeah. So one of the things I'm dealing with is hypertonicity. Mm -hmm. which is much like it's in the tight muscles uh -huh. and um, and I, I've tried so many different things and um, and I'm still trying a lot of different things and it's really a nightmare and yeah. um, like I could I could it's mostly in my thigh muscle in my left left leg mm -hmm. and um, so <coughs> I will I will uh, start walking and in the walking the muscle would loosen up mm -hmm. and i think wow this is great i sit down for two or three minutes and i get back up and it's tight all, all over again yeah and it's hard to i ask questions I, I don't think the physical therapist that i was dealing with even mentioned it to me once in the oh. period of time they were wor working with me so is there anything you mentioned the magnesium. I mm -hmm. think I've had very detailed blood work up and almost everything is, is within range. I follow a plant-based plant whole food, food diet. Good. So um, so that's my question for you. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I have a couple thoughts and I'm glad you had work up because I, Besides the magnesium, I was wondering about potassium. I mean, that, and, and sodium, potassium, magnesium all really need to be in balance because they're very involved with that muscle contraction. But it sounds like you looked at that already. Um, does does it is it tight? Like, is it painful? Tight? No, thank heavens, no. Okay. It, it just stiffens up. Um, and have you had your, have you been looked at structurally? Like there's not a, you know, a nerve specifically in your, your thigh, you know, something, a, a nerve or somewhere that's out, like your alignment for your spines out of balance? Well, I, um, I go um, regularly. I have a naturopath that I see. Good. Um, I, um, uh, I really, uh, I, I'm covered on a lot of bases. Okay, the, right. So the all one last one last thing, the third thing that came to my mind when you were chatting was, and th this is a, a supplement that you can try. It's called malic acid. It's M A L I C and um, acid, and I, I also use it a lot for people with fibromyalgia or th that they have sore muscles. But I have found that it helps the muscles, the, the, the muscle cells react appropriately to stimuli. Um, and so the malic acid also decreases lactic acid, but it also just helps the muscles to be able to function the way you should be, they should be. So if you've already looked at, again, potassium, magnesium, um, sodium, the a malic acid supplement um, could be safe to, to try and see. Thank you. Yeah, you could ask your naturopath about that too. <laughs> I will. I will. Good. What dose level on that? The malic acid? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's something you could try too. Usually it comes in 500 milligram capsule. And I would definitely say one twice a day, like maybe morning and evening, but you could do a third dose in the middle of the day too. Okay. Yeah. Josh and I should get together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I think Angela's had her hand up actually for quite a while. So yeah. we'll see what she has. Hi, first of all, thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. And this is great stuff. So my, I am not in Oregon. So where do I find you where I am? Oh, yeah. Where are you at? What, what yeah. state? I'm sorry, where? Minnesota. Okay. There is a... Um, 
Yeah, let me think of that. So there, there's a naturopathic national organization. It's, um, and I can spell it for you. It's, it's naturopathic.org. So it's, um, I'm a visual, I have to write it down. It's N-A-T-U-R, oh yeah. You're looking for something to write with? Are you? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. N-A-T-U-R, yeah, so N-A-T-U-R-O-P-A-T-H-I-C dot org. And so it's the National Association of Naturopathic Medicine doctors and you can search by state city what you're interested in so i'm sure you can find somebody that way good okay. good luck yeah thank you you're welcome and i think lana is our last one thank you michelle i have a, just a quick question i hear a lot of people talk about is it alpha lipoic acid after stroke can you address that Oh, that's an interesting one. I'm thinking off the top of my head here. I have people use a lot of alpha lipoic acid with, for, I have people use it for diabetes. It's, it really helps insulin work more efficiently and it is an antioxidant. So I, I think I don't have people use it a lot post-stroke, but my thought is it's an antioxidant. If there are free radicals, which cause damage all over your body after a stroke, the alpha lipoic acid probably combats, combats that. But certainly if I had someone who was also having blood sugar issues and have had a stroke, that would be a great supplement. What about nerve pain? I've heard it's used a lot for stroke nerve pain. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I really haven't had people, I haven't really done that. Um, but again, I'm wondering if it has something to do with the the damage, the free radical damage of the nerves, um, perhaps. I think for nerve pain, for gen in general, nerve pain, I'll have people use um, St. John's wort quite a, quite a bit. That works well for general nerve pain. But there's a lot of good benefits from alpha lipoic acid too. Uh, I think Marsha's got a comment. Yeah, so my um, chiropractor um, had me take alpha lipoic acid and it worked great. Huh? He also heard that. had me take a lot of other things, but um, that worked great for me. Oh, that's fantastic. So um, I don't know if anyone else has this problem, but when I saw the neurologist after my stroke, they said my um, blood, um, I wouldn't have any blood throw th through my carotid artery. He was wrong. One year later, I had blood flow. And I think a lot of it had to do with taking these natural supplements that he, my uh, chiropractor prescribed for me. Yeah, I, I believe it. I mean, I bet you reduced, it might've been just a lot of inflammation in your carotid artery and your chiropractor probably had you on a lot of anti, natural anti-inflammatories. So that's fantastic. Um, yeah. Well, I oh, oh got Gunner's a got a comment. Yeah, Is, I just wanted to say that, um, I've made a recovery that's been nothing short of miraculous from where I've been. And uh, I take this product that I've taken for uh, since before I had my strokes called Nerve Renew. And it is a combination of vitamins B12, B6, B1, some other supplements, and alpha lipoic acid. And I also take uh, additionally a product called Nerve Repair optimizer that comes from the same company from mm. nerve renew mm. and it has been miraculous in reducing the nerve pain i have from my peripheral neuropathy i've been a type 2 diabetic for 18 years uh -huh. and in addition i think it has to help with the repair and and main, maintenance of my nervous system and brain in my recovery i've just had just completed a uh a set of uh, new um, 
MRIs on my brain uh, that are two years apart from the last one I had. And I have very little brain left that was actually active two years ago. And, and we're dying to find out whether I have as much or less or more brain. I mean, the neuroplasticity has been amazing uh, in my recovery. And uh -huh. I think the supplements, especially, uh, and, and a lot of those that you mentioned are supplements that I do take. Good. And I think it has been a very positive thing in my recovery overall. So your information is spot on. You guys should all be paying attention to it. And uh, alpha lipoic acid is great. Um, and so is the vitamin B12. Yeah. And um, I think lion's mane is in there too. In, in some other supplements that I take, I take a lot of stuff. But yeah. uh, what's nice is that whereas um, six years ago, I was on 11 different prescription meds. Now I'm only on seven. That's awesome. That's great. Tremendous yeah. re reduced amounts. That's fantastic. That's, yeah. that's, oh, that, 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 that makes me so happy. Yeah, the B, B12 is a, a deficiency in B12 by any and anybody causes a lot of neuropathy and nerve pain. So that's certainly something that, that I almost always look at if anybody has any kind of nerve pain. And what's so great about the B vitamins, you can take high doses and you urinate them out. You're not going to right. overload on it. So they're really safe to take in high amounts. So that's, that's, that's great. That's wonderful. Right on. Well, I think we're wrapping up. Thank you so much, okay. Michelle. Yes, yeah, thank you. Okay. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank yeah. you, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Bye.